The Idol Master has had several platforms released under its belt throughout its lifespan, and they have all found their footing and managed to survive for several years with a stable foundation. Except for one particular platform. However, Bandai Namco have expressed their intent to right their wrongs and finally give Saidem fans what they deserve with their next platform, Growing Stars. For today's video, we will discuss why this is a very important chapter in Saidem's history and the significance of this release. Everyone, welcome to the second edition of the Producer's Office. Today's topic, Saidem Growing Stars. Will it be what the fans deserve? It's no secret that Saidem has been treated as the black sheep of the Idolmaster franchise in several different ways. From the fact that its anime adaptation has not received a second season even if the previous two adaptations did, to the horrible miscommunication and disrespect the initial started season announcement gave the fans, there's no denying that followers of Saidem have been waiting for something that will soothe these wounds for a long time. Since then, Bandai Namco has been very good at letting Saidem fans know that they're just as important a part of the Idolmaster family as any other franchise through different ways, such as including them in 5-star content like pop links and anniversary albums, to featuring them along with the female members of the franchise in live segments on national television, something other franchises are not willing to do. However, the sentiment is there that the fans of Saidem deserve something bigger, something that will make them truly feel rewarded as fans, and that they're given just as much attention as everyone else. A platform as flashy as Starlight Stage maybe, perhaps a platform as well-maintained as Theater Days, a content medium as well-written as Shiny Colors, something that can be proven that they've learned and their previous mistakes from Sidem's soon-to-be-discontinued platform at the recording of this video, which is Live On Stage. Speaking of Live On Stage, let's talk about that for a moment. Live On Stage was Sidem's first attempt at a rhythm game based platform, and if you've watched any of my videos on this channel, you will recognize it as the example that I constantly give as the worst handled modern Idolmaster platform, and it consequently announced its closure because of this. There's no real point behind discussing what Live On Stage's problems were, as I am sure that these were already quite obvious and that Sidem fans wouldn't want to tread old ground several times, but it's important to look at it and acknowledge what could be done better. First off, one of the most obvious criticisms of the game was that it was released with no real fanfare or proper planning and seemed to simply coincide with the airing of the anime, probably because it made sense to release your mobile game at the same time your show comes out. The second problem was that the developer, Akatsuki Games, were clearly not knowledgeable with the source material and did not treat Saidem with the love and care that it deserved. There was no emotion to the kinds of content that was delivered, unlike what you see with side games and how they allow Starlight Stage to collaborate with their IPs or with Theater Days and Shiny Colors, and how Namco gives extreme detail to card art and song composition for those games to match the characters perfectly. To shorten the problem into a few words, Saidem Live On Stage was made with no real genuine love from its developer, and that was clear from the early days of the game's runtime. Live On Stage did have one form of original content, which was the World Treasure album, an album where songs were made with specific countries in mind. But this pales in comparison to the multiple original albums and anniversary events that games like Starlight Stage or Theater Days had. Needless to say, this game made Saidem fans feel shortchanged and aggravated that they were missing out on what Namco provided their peers and not to them. With Live On Stage's announced closure, all of the content that was previously planned to have been made for the game will be continued in the original card collecting mobile game instead, to be given some form of life until a better way has been made. Since then, there have been a few streams giving details about growing stars that have Saidem fans feeling a bit more optimistic about this attempt. For one, the game's director of Idolmaster himself, known as Mimotopi, has stated that he will use this platform as a sort of revenge for how unsatisfactory the previous game was, and vows to use the fact that the game is an in-house development venture by Bandai Namco themselves to make the game better overall. Having the game be developed in-house means that there is a more direct involvement with the people behind the franchise and the output of the game, something that lacked during Live On Stage's runtime and is what defines the other platforms Idolmaster currently has. We still do not know all of the features planned for the game yet, but a few demos and gameplay streams have shown that the core rhythm portion of the game has been modernized. 
No longer will Saidem fans have to bother with that clunky one-button layout. Instead, they are now looking forward to a system that was seen to be as challenging as Starlight Stage, but as responsive as Theater Days, putting the two games' best rhythm aspects into one. Brand new art for the units, and the song jackets for the units have also been revealed, and there is even a debut of a completely new unit for Growing Stars named Classed First, very similar to when Kaori and Sumugi debuted for Theater Days, and those characters were extremely well received and are some of the franchise's most popular girls today. Suffice to say, the boys of Class First have been welcomed into 315 Productions very warmly, and fans cannot wait to learn more about them when the game launches. We do not know yet for sure if Growing Stars will knock it out of the park and give Saidem fans everything they've ever asked for, as games that become great develop over time and with constant feedback. But what little we currently know of Growing Stars feels like a much more solid ground to start walking on compared to the rocky steps that Saidem's previous game platform forced fans to take. It will be very interesting to see the boys of 315 Productions get the love and care that they so needed for the past years, as it constantly hurts my heart to see both the fans and the voice actors themselves pour their hearts out for the series with Bandai Namco not giving them a quality game to return their favor. No doubt that you will be seeing me on release date as I am a Jupiter and Altissimo producer myself, and will no doubt try to enjoy the game as much as possible while providing feedback for it so it can be the best that it can be. This is 315 Pro's next big chance to show the world that they are worth looking into, so I wish Mimotopi and the rest of Saidem's staff and voice actors the best in their upcoming future. This has been The Producer's Office, a more discussive and freeform kind of video apart from the rather informative series that we used to do on this channel. We're looking to continue making content like this for topics concerning the Idol Master, as there are a lot of potential talk points that are just waiting to be elaborated on. If you have any specific aspect of the Idol Master that you'd like us to explore, please feel free to let us know. Until then, see you in the next video.